Today I'm going to be talking about my Android FJ Cruiser head unit. Um, there have been a lot of questions on YouTube and the FJ Cruiser forums about details and reviews on this on these things. And uh, I just wanted to give you guys an overview of my experience both buying it and uh, using it in real life. So I know that although part of the charm of the FJ Cruiser is its throwback uh, features, including the interior styling and technology, you know, there's sometimes there is a lot to be desired in terms of technological creature comforts. In fact, when car shopping, it's reasonable to say that some people can be swayed one way or the other by a great infotainment system or, or a bad one. Um, you know, it, it plays a huge part of the driving experience. So it definitely is a real factor when people shop for cars. So before I go into the new system, I want to talk about the old system and uh, some of the reasons why I decided to upgrade. So when you look at the old FJ Cruiser stock stereo, this is the bezel here. You can see these four buttons, one, two on either side here. So I just wanted to give you a sense of how much space these buttons are actually taking up. If I take a, a tape measure here and I measure the distance between the edge of the bezel to the radio location, it is it's exactly two and a half inches on both sides. So five inches of space is being taken up by these four buttons. That's one of the reasons why I decided to go from this to this. Um, it just, I feel like it takes better advantage of the space. And of course, I still have these functional buttons. I've got the hazard lights here, which are still working. I've got the uh, defrosting button here and then of course these are just indicator lights i will say that uh the things that i did like about it was that it had a physical volume knob in this new system there is no physical on off button or volume knob so uh what you would have to do is uh you would just basically turn the volume down and then uh there is a there is a an option to turn off the screen that's uh, it's one of the simple things that I do miss about having uh, the stock FJ stereo. The things that I did not like about the old system mainly was the clumsy Bluetooth system. So I share this car with my wife and between the two of us, we're switching cars back and forth pretty, pretty often. And um, what we would have to do is if, if she was driving the car and then I'd get in the car, I would have to hit the uh, voice button. It would take you through a number of different prompts, like uh, two or three different steps. And it would be like phone setup, list phones. And then you would have to listen to the list of phones. And then you would say pair phone or select phone. And then of course it would just be this, uh, this long drawn out process that just took forever. And then like half the time you'd have to go into your phone Bluetooth and then connect again. So it was uh, kind of a pain to do so to switch between drivers so this new unit automatically connects to my bluetooth so that was a huge time saver and it's so much more convenient than the stock fj system the other thing that i did not like about it it was the voice command system so uh, i have a 2012 version and it does have the uh the mode buttons the up and down buttons the volume control and phone controls here. So this is the voice command. So if I wanted to use the voice command and dial somebody, I would have to basically click on this button and it would say, say a command. And then, you know, you would just basically say, I call so-and-so and, -so and uh, then it would take you through a number of different steps to make that command happen. I ended up buying this through a an eBay store, um, and it was my second time trying to obtain one of these. So uh, I'd been researching FJ Cruiser stereo upgrades, and I've seen a lot of different vendors with a variety of different pricing for different size screens and different types of head units. 
Um, but I will say that my first go around with purchasing one of these was through AliExpress. It was a vendor by the name of Golden Quality Factory Store. Now the reason why I was drawn to this specific store was because they had these units for a relatively cheaper price than I could find anywhere else. I was able to find a head unit. Uh, it was black and not silver, but I could buy one for $348. And that came with two gigs of RAM and a 16 gig hard drive. When you inquire about the unit, there's someone on the other end who sends you uh, an email saying, hey, so can you please send me a picture of your dashboard? And so I did exactly that. Uh, I sent them a picture of the uh, original stock head unit. They asked, do you have the JBL sound system? Which I do not. So if that's the case, I, you know, they'll, they'll like supply um, uh, some extra cables um, so that you can connect your existing JBL system. Um, so fortunately for me, I didn't have that. I don't know if they were going to supply it for free or if they were going to charge me extra for um, including these adapters, but I didn't have that. So anything that I buy from China, I, I usually just, I expect for it to take a long time to ship and it was no different for this head unit. So I remembered purchasing this unit and I waited a month and a half. I think I was really patient with it. So I uh, waited about a month and a half and kept checking the the site for any updates or anything but at some point I started to get worried so I I contacted the seller and I asked them for some updates and um, they informed me that it didn't make it through customs so they said that it was sent back to them and at that point I I asked for a refund um, I had to open up a dispute and they eventually got me my refund so there was no issues with the refund process but the fact that it just didn't make it just kind of discouraged me a little bit and uh, I you know I went looking for another unit now I'm kind of happy that it happened that way simply because when I bought it it was the black version and I really didn't want the black version I wanted the silver version but I couldn't find it anywhere so um, I just kept looking and uh, sure enough eventually I, f I came across a store on eBay uh, the seller's name is uh, Supper Stores 77. So S U P P E R Stores, one word, 77. There's an icon of an Australian flag on their uh, on their eBay page. So that to me uh, was a little more encouraging because if I can't import a head unit from China, let's try Australia. So that was my reasoning behind going with that particular seller. So I purchased it, and since it was on eBay. I paid for it through PayPal and it automatically did the price conversion for me. So after the PayPal conversion, it ended up being 450 US dollars with $27 shipping for a grand total of $477 paid for this unit. When I did purchase the unit, they sent me an email just like the other seller from AliExpress asking me to send them a picture of the head unit. And uh, the email came in broken English just like the AliExpress one did. So even though the icon had an Australian flag on it, I assumed that I was dealing with people from Australia, but I have a feeling that I was actually dealing with people from China. The language in the email was 99% the same. Um, it asked for a picture and it also they also asked about the JBL system. Do you have the JBL sound system? Send me a picture. Um, so it was essentially the same process. So I, I sort of felt like um, it was like deja vu. But uh, the plus side of this is that it did not take a month and a half. Uh, it literally got from wherever it shipped to my house here in Los Angeles in about eight or nine days. Um, now, before I get to that shipping, um, they contacted me and they said we have the black one in stock now or we can import the gray one for you but you'll have to wait three to five more days so I opted to wait three to five more days and I said I want the silver one luckily I did that because when I originally purchased this um, on eBay it says and I think it still says this to this day on their store uh, it's like an 8.0 Android version uh, and they only have black. So when they imported 
the the silver version for me they said that they loaded on uh, the latest Android software which is Pi 9.0 so I got I got an upgrade uh, didn't they didn't charge me anything extra and I got the silver version that I wanted so that was kind of cool customer ser service was really uh, pretty helpful um, they were they were really good at uh, answering questions through email so that's good ultimately I ended up with a T290 Android 9.0 uh, so it, you'll see here it's got 4 gigs of RAM and a 32 gig hard drive. Alright, so I think you want to see some of the features, so I'm going to go ahead and just do that. So I'm going to get the key in, and once again you'll be able to see the startup time. you got a stopwatch, go ahead and uh, start it now. But you can see it's running the Pi. Toyota logo comes on. Now you can change this to whatever you want. If you've got a picture of your kids or whatever, you can uh, change it out and, and make that appear. Which is kind of a cool feature um, on these Android units. Alright, so here... Right off the bat, that was just the initial startup. Once I do have it turned on and I turn off the car, there's a specific amount of time that you can set it to and you can customize this. And when you get back in the car and turn it on, it turns back on immediately. So it's just the initial boot up time that uh, it does take quite a bit of time. There is an option here to uh, keep the unit asleep while the car is off. Um, so I have it at five minutes, so it's called shutdown delay when ACC off. And I mean, you can have it up to five minutes, uh, from five minutes to up to an hour. Uh, I really don't have a need to keep this on for that long. So if I wanted to walk away from the car for an hour and come back and have the thing start up immediately, uh, this would be able to keep it on for an hour. So uh, I keep it at five minutes because, you know, the startup time doesn't really bother me when I get in my car. Uh, while I'm backing out of the garage, um, I have more than enough time and I can wait for uh, my music to turn on or whatever. The other cool part about this is there is no wait time to access the rear view camera. So if you're, if you're on a cold start, right, and uh, you need to back up immediately, you can just switch switch it into reverse and of course you've got the uh, the view there immediately so uh, I do have it here uh, the feed from the mirror is uh, linked to the head unit um, so there is no uh, there is no moving guides it just it's just uh, it just stays straight the big complaint about the the mirror is it's such a small feed and it's so small but you can see it a little bit bigger here um, it it is very pixelated it's not the highest resolution but it does the job um, personally I'm quite content with this up here um, you know I'm not used to you know 3d cameras or, or, or high resolution I'm used to this little one and the other car that we have is a 2010 RAV4 which has this exact same system so um, I'm happy with this you can see if you look closely uh, you can see the lines there's sort of like a like a linear effect going on here I've sort of tinkered around with the cabling connection up there and I think if I tinkered around with it I can see the feed sort of like moving around and shaking. I have a feeling that if I go in there and I secure the connection then those moving lines, I don't know if you can see it there, but I think those moving lines will disappear. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with it, I mean I'm content with it so as not to mess with what I've already got going on. Okay, so this uh, screen is something that I, uh, I downloaded. It's a car launcher called Agama Car Launcher. Uh, the reason why I downloaded this car launcher, first of all, was because initially I was pretty disappointed with the way the screen looked. Now, if you go to the radio, you can see that the colors are kind of muted. It's kind of gray. 
and uh, I actually emailed them and I said the colors look a little bit off it looks a little cyan it looks a little too blue and uh, I asked them for a password to get into the back end where I was trying to tinker around with the color settings and it didn't really help so um, right off the bat the the, uh, the graphics look kind of similar for the home screen um, where it's kind of blocky and gray and it's just kind of drab um, but it looked kind of like this and it was like eh, it's not the best looking uh, interface so I ended up downloading this uh, car launcher which um, I discovered because I was as I was researching this unit through uh, the Bell C website, um, I noticed that they were using, uh, they listed Agama Car Launcher as, as part of the software that was uh, on the system. So uh, it was just a, an app that I downloaded from the uh, Google Play Store and I installed it and now I have the, the car launcher. So uh, it does definitely uh, improve the color of the screen. Um, and of course, uh, you can go in there and change and customize your color. So there's an option here where you can just uh, change the colors of the themes. I have it to what I like right now, so I'm not going to change anything. But you can change the uh, the lines from 3D, 2D. You can see that it's changing there. You can do stitching or a solid line. And then uh, background, you can change the different uh, background looks there. So uh, it's... You know, it's kind of a nice little feature that that'll let you customize it to your liking. Um, pretty basic stuff, but it uh, it makes all the difference. Um, so I think I've changed it to. Let me just uh, cancel out of here. Okay, so that's that's how I like it. So that's the way it's gonna stay for now. Okay, so one thing I do want to mention is uh, with this car launcher and this head unit, since it does not have a volume button, that's one of the things that um, I don't like about it. So uh, volume control, it says, may not work on head units. I can confirm that it does not work on this specific head unit. Um, I can, let's say I want to enable, right? So what that does is that it adds this plus and minus button here. If you download the car launcher app on your phone, what you would do is you would just kind of swipe up and swipe down here and it would change the volume on your phone. So without having a physical volume knob, all you would do is touch the screen up and touch the screen down and uh, you would be able to change your volume that way. Otherwise, you still have the steering mounted controls here to do it. But um, I've found that this does not work like it says. It's If I've got music playing, the idea is that you would be able to swipe up and swipe down to change the volume, or is it left to right? No, so I can't do that. And even if I go back here to the home screen, right, you'll see the volume is supposedly down to mute, but it's not, it's not adjusting. So that doesn't work. So that's one thing. So I will say that if you have the steering wheel controls, you can do it that way. If you did not have controls here, I've seen some older FJ models with nothing here or here. Um, I would not recommend this system because you would have to, you know, while you're driving, you'd have to find the volume button here. And of course, you know, while you're driving, it's a little bit harder to do, but you can do it that way. But I tried to do this just earlier and I accidentally, um, I think I was trying to find like the brightness of the screen here so you can adjust brightness. Um, when I was trying to adjust the brightness of the screen, let me turn this down, um, I accidentally hit the volume instead of the screen brightness and I had it like swiped all the way up and it like blew out my eardrums. So uh, that was a uh, that was a huge uh, negative for me where it's like if I'm driving and I'm trying to like, you know, make the screen brighter and I accidentally hit the volume button, then like there's no quick way for me to turn off the volume or turn it down without like making my ears bleed. So that could be uh, could be kind of dangerous while you're driving. Just uh, uh, one of the huge drawbacks of this system is you know, a lack of the volume button. Another thing I don't necessarily like, and it's a very small thing, is the clock is sometimes inconsistent. So here, you'll see here it says 12.26 p.m. And then I'll go up here and it says 12.28. Now, there was a point in time where I synchronized this clock with this clock. 
and somehow it just seems to be off just a little bit so uh, not the biggest thing but uh, it, it is something uh, worth noting another thing that I don't necessarily like is when this is installed the stock uh, aux port and the uh, the uh, USB uh, can no longer function so uh, I had to find a replacement I'll put a link below in the description of what I bought but essentially I had to take apart the OEM uh, aux port and USB input and uh, replace it with this so the cool thing about this unit is it does have two USB inputs um, of course this is one of them and uh, you there's a USB extension that you plug into the back as well as the uh, aux input which you get to by hitting the mode button and then there is you can cycle through and it would be AV in so if I plugged in uh, an aux cord I would be able to play music through here um, and then of course the other one if you watch my other video I routed the other USB cable to the glove box and it sits in here so there's two inputs there's one there and then one down here so that's a a huge plus where you know if I wanted to have uh, my music uh, here I can do that and then of course if I wanted to run uh, Android Auto or CarPlay I would run it through the other uh, USB input or vice versa so that's a that's a nice nice benefit there One other thing that uh, I could not keep OEM was the original microphone for the Bluetooth uh, phone system. So the original microphone lives up in the uh, on top of the rear view mirror. So it did originally come with its own microphone, which uh, the installer mounted up here. And I just didn't want to have it in plain sight, so I rerouted everything. So. Basically, I took apart the A-pillar and then I fished it into here, which is uh, this custom sunglasses holder that I installed. And uh, basically, this square piece here, uh, I'm able to uh, take off. So I was able to mount this microphone. I just drilled a hole here, mounted it through here, and I have a microphone. It's an omnidirectional microphone. Which, uh, which is kind of nice because if I'm in a car and I get a call from somebody and uh, you know somebody that me and my passenger knows, then we can both uh, speak and be heard clearly uh, from a microphone mounted in the center of the headliner as opposed to just on one side of the dash. This is the housing that the microphone came in. Uh, originally, it was black and uh, I decided to paint it to match the color of the interior trim. The original idea was to uh, just two-way tape it up here, uh, but you know, it sticks out a little bit. So uh, what I discovered was I was able to open up the case here. So this is the original color before I painted it. But anyway, the case opens up and it housed a microphone inside of here. It looks just like that. Um, I gotta redo the paint of the uh, the grommet there just to kind of clean it up a little bit. But essentially, it sits up there and it's out of the way. It's it's pretty much almost flush to the surface of that thing. Um, I'm happy about the uh, the way it picks up sound from both the passenger and myself. You can switch uh, apps just by clicking on this thing. Now you have your you know, your different apps that you can scroll through. Uh, since I had these open earlier, I can close them now. Um, assistant, Bluetooth. But uh, that's one of the things where I think the mode button comes in handy because, you know, if I wanted to switch from like radio to, uh, I don't know, music player or even videos, then having a mode button here is super helpful because uh, I can easily just um, cycle through with uh, with the button here so if like I said before if you don't have uh, these specific buttons on the steering wheel I would not recommend having a touchscreen I would recommend something with more tactile buttons especially a volume knob um, 
just to kind of uh, make your driving safer. Now, when I use maps, I have my phone mounted up here. And uh, it's just, for me, it's safer to kind of like, as I'm driving, I'll glance you know, at my phone, uh, my map, and I'll do this as opposed to having to look down here and I'm driving, look down here. So it does, uh, I will say that I have had a couple of close calls uh, while I'm driving. If I'm sort of fumbling around, uh, I'll have to take my eyes off of the road and look down. So uh, that's one of the huge drawbacks of having a screen in the center mounted area in any car. Um, it just makes driving a little bit more distracting. And I will say that without the tactile buttons, like a volume knob, it is a little bit more challenging. And it did take me a while to get used to driving with this. Even though I have the option to to run uh, maps on this screen, and it looks pretty awesome, like seeing things really, really big, um, it is not as convenient or as safe for me to be looking down here as opposed to you know, having my phone mounted here. As I'm driving, I can quickly uh, see uh, my driving progress as opposed to having to look away from the road. All right, so now that I have a bunch of the dislikes out of the way, let's talk about the things that I actually do like about it. And the first thing is obvious. It's the enormous screen. Uh, it is really big and it looks really cool. After having experienced this big screen, every car that I go into that has anything smaller, which is most of the cars out there, I'm just not that impressed by it anymore. It's just, uh, it's really cool to look at. It looks really sharp and, and crisp and, uh, it's just, it's big. The second thing I really, really like about it is the Bluetooth calling experience. Now, I mentioned earlier how clumsy I thought the stock FJ system was. Um, this car, um, you know, if I go into the car and it's super easy between, you know, having to switch cars, uh, you just get in the car and it automatically connects your Bluetooth, which is so much better than having to, you know, push the talk button and connect phone, list phones, uh, phone setup, all that stuff. There's like three or four, maybe five different steps that you have to go through in order to pair your phone in the first place, which, you know, is not very convenient at all. Using the phone, really, really easy, really simple. It's got big numbers. You can just dial stuff or whatever. Or on top of that, you can use a voice command. One of the things that you can do is connect this system to your, uh, I have it connected to my Google account. So if I click on, uh, there's a, a button here for voice recognition. There's one on the, on the uh, steering wheel too. So I'll hit that and then it should pull up Google Assistant, which you see over there. Up here. Uh, since this is an Android unit, you can you can customize what you see. So I like to have my my voltmeter up here, and of course it just uh, it's it's a little low because I'm running this without the engine on. But um, you can sort of uh, see at a glance quickly, even though I have the voltmeter up here, um, you can see sort of a a, a numerical figure there. So that's kind of cool. Okay, I want to talk about audio quality. Um, audio quality is superior to the stock system only because it has an equalizer that allows me to customize my sound preferences. So they have these presets. You can change different presets. There is a, a wider range of options here as opposed to the stock FJ. So if I wanted to go into, you know, adjust my settings here, I can do that. But here's the fader. So um, previously, uh, I was I was told that I have speakers in the headliner here, which I didn't believe. I mean, I knew that it was a thing, but like I have just a very basic sound system with the speakers in the doors and on the dash. I don't even have speakers on the rear uh, back there. But once I was able to kind of go in here and play with the uh, the fader settings. 
I was able to notice that sound was indeed coming from the headliner. So that was something that I wasn't able to adjust or experience with the stock unit. Um, if I want to go rear left. It's definitely coming from above my head for sure. Um, and I know that I don't have any speakers back here in the passenger area. Um, there is definitely sound coming from up above my head. So that to me confirms the fact that I do have speakers up here. But, you know, I wasn't even able to realize that uh, when I was doing the uh, fader thing in my, uh, my stock FJ uh, system. So I'm just gonna reset it. There is this loudness button here that is like uh, giving your system a boost of like adrenaline. It just makes everything sound nice and thumpy. So immediately, I don't know if it, uh, if it, I don't know if you could really tell the difference through the phone, but everything sounds a lot more full. There's a lot more bass. And I really like the sound of it. It's definitely, it definitely sounds better than all of the uh, the bass that I could get out of my stock system. So here it is. Off. Okay, so hopefully that, that comes through well. Um, I know that uh, you know having to upgrade a stereo system, one of the biggest questions is whether or not the audio quality is better. I will say uh, yes, it is. Uh, and this loudness feature definitely has a huge, uh, huge thing to do with it. So I am getting a significantly better sound with that button on than I was getting from my stock uh, head unit. Now I realize that some people, you know, might want to put an iPad in here and uh, I would prefer to have a head unit that, that was basically built for the FJ and it looks pretty much stock um, as opposed to having to uh, fabricate a mount for the iPad. And even then to have your stereo connected to your speakers and everything um, and, you know, having to have the USB inputs, the ability to download apps um, of your choosing. Uh, I know you can do that with the iPad, but it just, this is this is a stereo system that was made for the car. It did come with a secondary camera, which I did not install. I imagine that I could have installed it somewhere on my front grill and had a front view camera, which would have been awesome, um, but I uh, have not yet done that. Also, since I have this Agama car launcher, all of these different things are customized to my own liking. So if I wanted to have, uh, I don't know, I have settings here, but if I just click and hold, I'm able to go in and I can change the icon if, and I can change the app that it launches. And obviously I can change the name. So uh, here's the name, you click on that. So I have it as settings. Uh, so this is all customizable. The colors are customizable. Okay, really important thing to consider here is the way that this head unit is connected to data. So uh, I connect it through my phone's uh, hotspot. So what I have to do is I got to turn on the Wi-Fi. Turn this on. And since I've already paired my phone before, um, it should recognize it. You really don't need to connect the head unit to data. I use this mostly for audio listening. Uh, I listen to the radio, I listen to music on a USB stick, uh, and I use it for my Bluetooth calling on the phone. So those features don't require data. It does come with a stock uh, navigation system called iGo, which uh, it's not the best system in the world. I really don't like it that much, um, but it doesn't require any additional data. It uses the 
GPS module that it's supplied, but Google Maps does. If I disconnected my phone's data and I tried to click on Google Maps, it would not, uh, it would not function. So the cool thing about this is since it's an Android unit, you can go in through the Play Store and download a bunch of different apps if, uh, if you so choose to. I'm just gonna run through a few of the apps just to kind of give you guys an idea of how quickly or how slowly things go. Uh, so keep in mind this is connected to my T-Mobile uh, 4G data plan. Uh, it looks like I'm about four bars here on data, so uh, let's give it a go here. Uh, using the buttons on the steering wheel. Volume controls work. All right, let's try a different app now. Let's go back. Let's try. podcasts. Support for This American Life comes from Quip, one of the first electric toothbrushes accepted by the American Dental Association. Often they were outside. Hello. So Chris was stuck that you did not know not know about. Just skipping Money ahead with Chris the is, volume was a total wall of silence. Volume works. Except for the people who were telling me to buzz off. Okay. Yeah. I actually went out and I printed out the claim. That's working fine. So it's buffering a little bit. Um, I guess it's just, I don't know. I guess if you have a faster 4G connection, then you might have better success. But, you know, I'm not I'm not watching YouTube while I'm driving or whatever. It's just kind of kind of a cool thing to have, uh, I guess, uh, if you're sitting around or whatever. But, you know, if you're sitting around in a parking lot, you're, you're watching, you might as well be watching on your phone. So uh, this is just kind of, kind of nice uh, to demonstrate, but not something that I would do every day. I purchased the Torque Pro app. This is the OBD2 module that I bought. So now it's plugged in. So here I had to go to my Bluetooth settings, connect it to the OBD2. Now it says connected. 
I go into torque. Now we've got some live data that we can see now. So here we go, here's the real time information here. I'm gonna rev it a little bit there. It shows my coolant, throttle, all this other stuff. So torque does work with it, as you can see here. So here is a look at the video. Um, the screen is really wide, but you can stretch it to fill the screen. Um, it does cut off a little bit of the top, so that's one thing to keep in mind. But otherwise, uh, it looks awesome. I think it looks great. Uh, it's bright enough, and uh, you know you can change the aspect ratio. If the stretching bothers you, you can watch it like this, but just be aware that there are extra bars on the side. So um, I found that having the screen image fit to screen is not all that bad. So uh, pretty cool. So bottom line is, would I recommend this unit? Uh, yes, I would. Only, like I said before, only if you have the steering wheel mounted volume buttons and the mode button. Otherwise, it can be a little distracting while you're driving, having to uh, you know go through the menus here. Um, also, if you don't have the option to have your phone's data connect to the system, then this may not be the right uh, head unit for you. Uh, although having said that, like I said before, uh, on a basic level, the essentials, which I consider radio, um, Bluetooth, um, those are things that don't require data. So you can maximize the, uh, the features of this head unit even without connecting your phone. But if you're driving an FJ without these uh, steering buttons, then I wouldn't recommend it just because it's, uh, it's not quite as safe driving and having to fumble through uh, through the screen to, to get your settings right. I think that the improvement in audio quality uh, is worth the upgrade. Uh, the improvement in the Bluetooth experience is worth the upgrade itself. The fact that you don't have to connect this head unit to data is a huge plus and it's reason enough to upgrade. Um, first of all, I mean, you get the, the big, the big screen experience. You sort of, you're modernizing your FJ's interior. It is nice to have some of the uh, creature comforts of some modern day vehicle infotainment systems. So this uh, is a huge upgrade. Uh, it definitely makes uh, my driving experience more enjoyable. Um, you know, I do, uh, utilize a lot of the features. The simplicity of the FJ stock system was awesome, but uh, I found that the uh, the benefits of having better sound, more controls, the ability to download apps, the CarPlay and Android Auto work on this. Um, so it basically, it almost future-proofs the FJ, um, and it just makes it more modern, which is uh, which is a really nice experience. So. Overall, I had a good experience with this uh, this seller. Shipping was fast. I uh, had a really good experience with that. So um, overall, uh, highly recommended. And like I said before, this silver unit is hard to find, but this supplier had one. So um, it was basically the only reason why I went with them. And I was glad that I did because um, just based on other people's experience with other sellers that I've, I've read about, um, they didn't quite have such a good experience. Yet. But uh, thank you for watching and uh, I hope that provided uh, some insight into the FJ Cruiser Chinese Android 12.3 inch head unit. So subscribe to my channel. Um, I've got a couple more mods that I'd like to share with you guys and um, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one.